Hi everyone, it's Nicole and I'm here with a layout and this is just using stuff from my stash and I want to show you a close-ups of all the pattern papers there so we can tell together what they are. Crate Paper, Ellie Studio, Basic Gray, Amy Tangerine, DIY Shop and then um, these are the eye zinc that I was saying uh, in the last layout that I had and I hadn't used yet so I took out my mixed media paper and that is 14 by 17 so I'm going to cut it down to size right off the bat and I'm going to cut it down uh, 11 and 3 quarters or 11 and a half by 11 and a half and it's too big to fit into my trimmer so I want to take my Martha Stewart um, massive ruler and I'm going to cut it out and it has a non-skid um, side to it so you can set it down on your surface and then it just doesn't move around and I like that because um, you know you're handling a a knife so you don't want it to you know cut you or something so these are from one of my recent hauls from Stampin' Up and they were designer papers and they're really thin and they almost have like a newspaper feel to them very thin and um, this had almost like it was like a story or like an, in a newspaper and I'm just going to rip it and then I'm going to use my matte medium and I'm going to glue it down on that mixed media paper So a little background on the pictures here. Um, I printed them on my Canon selfie and it's just, I, my son wouldn't pose for the picture. He said it was okay if I took pictures of his hands. So I just took pictures of his hands on the keyboard. And then I went on the internet and just printed off um, the first music sheet of the song that he learned to play. And it's the song Perfect by Headley and I absolutely love that song. Anyway, he um, went to school the other day and he said to the teacher, um, I just want to see if, you know, if I'm going in the right direction. Anyway, he played it for her and she gave him 100% because he nailed it. And there was even a part in the song that he didn't, really particularly enjoy so he changed it he changed the melody so that it flowed better and she said um where did you <laughs> where you know where did you find this part of the song and he said well I just changed it because I liked it better this way anyway she um the title of this page is you have a music touch and she said that's what she told him she said you have a music touch and I've had a lot of students and I don't say that to, to kids even ones that have taken music for years and he just has I don't know he like I said he's only been playing for six weeks and we got him the keyboard two years ago but he was just playing with one hand and you know mainly he was learning songs um gaming songs he would play those on the on the keyboard <laughs> and um but ever since like the teacher taught him the notes and stuff and he's just really um took on you know the keyboard he just loves it and he plays it all the time which I am loving because I've always wanted a child that could play music but none of them you know they wanted the guitars and they wanted this and they wanted that but they didn't want to take music classes um, and neither did he like we had suggested it to him and he didn't want to he said that you know hockey and was enough so so this was I hope you know his course is ending in January so I hope he's gonna keep playing because I love it so that's just a little background to the photo so what I'm doing is just um, again it's just 
pattern papers and um, that were from just from my stash and I just cut them apart and one of them is sort of a craft and it has music notes on it and I'm going to keep this page in the tones of um, the black the white because of the keyboard and then I'm going to add bring in and where that this is where the crafty tone comes in sort of a goldish yellow and some teal blues just because I wanted that contrast and I glued all the pattern papers down with um, matte medium and then I took a uh, baby wipe and I added some gesso and with a dry baby wipe and then I found it was I didn't want to cover the pattern papers because I really liked liked it a lot so I thought it was too much so then I took I let it dry and then I took a wet baby wipe and I wiped away in some areas some of that gesso and I really like that effect it really made it uh, even more muted than I wanted so, so I really um, really like that so now I'm just going to grab a bunch of sprays and inks and this is totally going to be a mixed media layout and because it's sort of you know a page for a boy I don't want to overdo it either so I can't um, bring in too many colors either. So I'm playing with a lot of stuff from my last haul. This is the texture paste from at Ranger and it's really light. I love it. I just wish it came in bigger tubs because that's a fairly small tub. And then I use my favorite things um, template that I also bought and I said that it was one that was available with the hip kit but I was a little too slow ordering so I didn't get it so I just ended up ordering it from Simon Says Tamps because I really wanted it and I love those templates because they are super super thin so as you're adding your textured paste or your modeling paste or this is texture paste it doesn't go on super thick and I love that and um then I took I washed the template right away because then it gets really goopy and um, then I took the spray that I had taken out and it was a Prima spray color bloom and I end up covering most of that because the blue is not really the blue that I wanted but that's what I like about mixed media pages is you can end up changing a lot of that that color so I wanted to play with those eye zinc pigment inks so I'm just gonna take a drop of it and I'm gonna drop it on just some plastic um, like a leftover from an embellishment pack um, just because I couldn't find a palette and I'm just going to add some water to it just to make it a little bit more liquid and then I'm going to color in the texture paste now I could have done this two ways I could have put a little bit of texture paste on my mat and then I could have taken a dab of that and put it inside the texture paste and mixture did the mixture and I think that's what I'm going to do today and even though I have seven of them, um, like I want to do a um, pink layout today and I don't have any pink eye zinc. So I'll have to, you know, take something else to do um, some pink modeling paste. And so I used um, sort of an orange gold and a teal and I think it's called turquoise and mango in the eye zinc and I just colored the textured paste and now there was some left over and I just added a bunch of water and I just kind of dabbed it all over the layout just so that it would add a different texture to the layout too so I, I tried to um, dry everything in between um, 
Okay, so I lost about four minutes of recording there, so I'm going to have to stop it more often because with a 30-minute video, you don't want to have to redo it too often. But what I was saying was I just kind of added that texture. And with the eye zinc, they're pigment ink and they're permanent. But the Color Bloom, the Prima ink, they're not. So even if they're dried, if you add water to it, they'll run. So I just kind of did a little sample of it there. I took my spray bottle, sprayed it on it, and the pigment pigment ink did not run, but the Color Bloom did. So this is a music sheet from the song that he learned how to play. And it's not a simple song. Like it's, you know, like um, he was saying that the other kids in his class are still playing like uh, Mary Had a Little Lamb and, and those song and he finished those within the first couple of weeks and now he's um, he finished perfect he played the whole song and now he's uh, playing Hot and Cold from Katy Perry and I have my list of songs that I want him to play I want him to play a whole bunch of songs from Headley because I absolutely love Headley he um he's one of, they're one of my favorite bands that them and maroon five so i kind of have my list of songs i want him to play and his room is is almost right across from my scrapbook room and um he has a keyboard so he can turn up the music or turn it down but whenever he's playing i tell him to turn it up because i just absolutely love to listen to him play so where this you know it's sort of the first layout that I'm doing about his music uh, that he learned to play the keyboard in you know under a month um, I really wanted to put on the page the first song that he played in its entirety so I, I made sure that the the t the 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 title or the name of the song I guess perfect stayed visible and you know then it says Jacob Hoggart and that's the main the lead singer in um, Headley and so I just wanted to make sure that I didn't cover that up and as I'm doing the narration right now I'm probably thinking that I'll probably take those little alphas that you'll see me uh, putting later later and right under where it says Jacob's name I think I'm gonna put Headley right there so that years from now we'll know that it's the band Headley right now we know but you know years from now I just want to make sure that we remember that so now at this point I just want to add more texture to the background and I'm finding that that music sheet is very um, white because I printed it on white paper so I'm trying to distress it a bit but I, again I don't want to cover the name of the song or anything like that I did put some gesso over top just so that when I do add the different uh, mixed media to it that I don't end up making the ink bleed and um, and I'm making sure that I'm drying everything in between before I add more um, colors and texture over top so like like where the recording did stop I don't know if I this was cut off or not but I did use a template that I got from my uh, my last haul and it's from the crafters workshop called mini texturized and I'm using some yellow ink and some blue ink from Dina Wakely the um, heavy body ink or whatever it's called and uh, I got those inks at, or paints, not inks. I got those paints at Simon Says Stamps. And I believe I have all the colors now. So, and again, I found that that music sheet was just looking too new <laughs> compared to, because the rest of the page is very distressed and old looking. So I'm taking my distress ink and it's old paper so very appropriate and I'm just changing the color of the whole um, background of that music sheet and then I'm going to go get another um, Tim Holtz 
Distress Ink. And I think this is, uh, I can't remember which one it is. It's a, a brown one just to do the edges. And then I'm also going to do the edges of um, the mixed media cardstock too. So now I had taken out a bunch of, or a couple of six by six paper pad and I'm going to pull a couple of them. And this one here is, it's kind of got a texture on it. It's almost like it's laminated and it's black and white. So I just really love that because it just reminded me of the keys keyboard. So I'm going to mount the photo on that and it's going to hang over a little bit and I'm going to keep it because I just love the texture and then whatever I cut off I'm also going to keep that and use it as a layer. Now I found this pattern paper in one of the 6x6 paper pad and I think one of them was Kaiser Craft and the other one if you go to the beginning of the uh, video I show the 6x6 the six six paper pad and if you pause it then you'll be able to see who the manufacturer is and one of them kind of had an old record player and I thought, you know, it's kind of music related. So um, I used the whole six by six sheet and I'm going to use that as one of the layers and also what I'm going to um, put my title on. Now, like I said, I distressed the edge of that whole mixed media just so that it had that feel of mixed media kind of old paper <laughs> and because this was again a boy page I didn't want to make it too too bright or too girly you know and these are pink paisley alphas that were from my stash but I found the title was going to be too too long so I went again into my stash and found some uh, thickers and their journal and their black glitter and I really love that font because it's very skinny and you can put a fairly big title in a very small area. Okay so what I decided to do was some parts of the layout I just kind of fast forward it a little bit and to try to shave off a little bit of minutes off this um, video it was you know over 30 minutes so uh, up to now I have it down to about 27 but I might find other areas that I might um, make it go a little faster so I like like I said the title of this page is uh, you have a music touch and that's what the teacher said to him and at first I took out those Amy Tangerine gold stickers and at one point I'm um, I think it's when the camera might have been off. I just um, see my Teresa Collins little letters and I like those much better. And these are some of um, some of the embellishments that I decided to try to use up this month. So I'm going to use some of those on this layout. And while, you know, I was not recording I kind of went into my stash and tried to find some background papers that I could put sort of in the back and I can't really say to straighten it out because I end up cutting the middle out of it because I just loved it too much and I couldn't see you know wasting a whole pattern paper and I know I have tons of pattern papers but some of them I just love and the one that I end up deciding to use is in my mind's eye pattern paper and you're going to see my process at the end I have all six sheets and then I just keep doing link taking them out one at a time until I decide which one I want to use and then I took out my creative agenda a six by six paper pad and I did um, go through my 12 by 12 but I just I couldn't bring myself to all the papers that I wanted to use I told the back side of it had three by four cards so that meant that I was going to um, ruin some of the three by four cards in the back and four by six cards so I didn't want to do that so 
I remembered that I had the six by six paper pads. So I went and got those and most of the page here is very uh, monochromatic, like very uh, old looking um, with the blacks and the whites and, you know, the newspaper in the background and the craft paper. And then I used the old paper to distress everything, but I wanted to bring a splash of color and that's where I added some of the eye zinc and some of the uh, paints and um, now I'm going to add some color adding some pattern papers so I'm using a few layers and I'm not layering the whole um, photo I'm just kind of doing it to one side and kind of focusing on one side of the layout because the left side has that full six by six, the one I'm gluing down right now. And so I didn't want to cover that up because I just absolutely love it. So to kind of balance it off, I'm kind of adding papers to the right in a different color. And a lot of that mixed media stuff from the background is not totally covered. Like in person, you can still see a lot of that modeling paste that I put in the background and you know, the eye zinc uh, pigment ink and it just adds a lot of texture to the background. So I used um, the Tim Holtz inks or distress, distress inks again. And I just distress all the edges of the pattern paper. And then one of the creative agenda patterns was a grid. And of course it's a six by six pad, so it has a hole at the top. So what I did was I counted four grids to the left and four grids to the right. And I made my own little tag. Now I'm using my Ali Edwards story stamp again and um, my Memento ink. And I'm gonna stamp it in black and it's just the word currently. And that's where I'm gonna do my journaling about how he just picked up, you know, music really quickly. Now I'm just gonna take my ATG gun and I just made sure that um, where I glued, you know, was around the tag so that I could easily slip the tag in and out. And I kind of went a little too close. So I'm gonna have to, I couldn't find my uh, rubber eraser. And so I had to do it by hand and remove the glue and then I just kind of put the tag there and I'm going to add some twine to it. And then uh, it's not very uh, embellished heavy because whenever I, I do um, mixed media layout like this, I like to have the background kind of take a spot, you know, like, yes, the photo, you know, it's sort of, I kind of put it so it's the bottom right. And then I'm putting all my embellishments around that. And while I was off camera, I went through my freckled fawn kits and I found a, a few um, clips. And um, I don't put the blue stars on camera, but I do put them after the fact. I grab a few brads that in that mustardy goldish color and says yay because I'm really happy that he's playing the keyboard and I'm going to add those to the layout I end up putting some glossy accents in behind um, just because they kind of swivel around and I don't like that and you're going to see here I kind of put a big blob and today's Saturday October 18th and um, hip kit club is having an online class and usually I, I upload it yesterday and I'm uploading tomorrow and I wouldn't normally upload today because I only upload every second day but yesterday afternoon I decided to do this page sort of in like yay we have an online all day crop um, just kind of wanted I'm going to upload a few videos today not all um, scrapbook layouts but just a few videos um, a one haul I think or a couple hauls maybe and um, just to kind of 
kind of keep you updated on what's going on with the crop and stuff. Maybe another video. It depends if I can get it uploaded and narrated and online because I, I am going to participate in the online crop all day and you don't need to be a member. She's opening it up to everybody. So this is where I decide to use the My Mind's Eye background and it's a nice uh, diagonal stripe in yellow. And I kind of, you know, chose one after the other and tried it. And this, this is the one that I like the most. And maybe a different day, I would have chosen something different. So I'm just going to add um, some ATG to the outside of that mixed media layout. And then I'm just going to glue it down. Like I said, it's not really, if you're trying to straighten out the layout, you you wouldn't cut out the center of it. I also, I had some washi tape that was um, kind of had music notes on it. So I added those and then um, the little hearts were from a Heidi Swap chipboard stickers. And those I was trying to use, it's one of the sticker sheets that I'm, or embellishment packages that I'm trying to use up this month. So I used some of those on the layout too. So now I'm going to show you some close-ups of the layout. And if you have some time today, stop by the Hip Clip, Hip Clip, Hip Kit Club forum and uh, join in on the fun. And hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, uh, if you wouldn't mind giving me a thumbs up to let YouTube know. So that's it. Thanks for watching. Bye.